on this video I'm going to go through more of my thought processes in how I come about making different features and in this case I'm going to show you this now as of yet obviously it's not there you can see the arch up there that I call the Flintstones arch and what I'm intending to do is I'm intending to put one, two, three, four more sections in there. So we create the magical fives, threes, fives or sevens. So in this case, it'll be five different uprights. And I'm going to use the same thing, hopefully. Hopefully, we're going to use the telegraph poles again. I've got to get hold of them yet. I don't know where I'm going to get those yet, but they are available online. So I shall probably look there first. I do know a couple of people who may be able to get me these. So we'll try those as well. So what I'm doing is, what I'm intending to do is actually put up what I shall call the Telegraph Pole Pergola Walk. And that'll be this. We'll have to do exactly what we've done on the top one. We'll have to dig them in and we'll have to put tops on them. Now, because I want to grow different things up each one of these, I also need to put something on the top. So if you imagine a railway line, that's the kind of image I'm going to do on top. That's the kind of thing I'm going to put on top but probably using either flat pieces of wood or normal pine posts, which will be a lot thinner than the ones that are up there now. And they'll run towards me down here. Now, the reason for doing it, there's always a reason for doing it. And I'll take you up here and show you. So in this case, it's because I want to have a walk that attracts you down to the nook. And obviously the nook was the secret garden, but no longer. And thanks to the person who suggested that I change it to the nook, that's great. Good name for it, it is a secret place after all. But it's not quite a secret garden. So you can, you've got to have quite an imagination now. So which, where those posts are, you'll be coming down and you'll be walking through an almost tunnel effect. And on each side, there'll be things growing up and over. Now, I'm not going to worry too much that we've got box edge in there at the moment. We can soon move those out of the way while we dig the post in. That won't be too hard a task to do because these haven't been in that long. And I've yet to set it out properly. It's not really set out properly at the moment. That's just to guide me. Just to give me the idea of what it'll look like. Now, I've been toying with this idea for a long time. And I've always known I was eventually going to do it. I've had several different ideas of where I'm going to put this pergola walkway. But I've settled on this. And as I said earlier, that's because I want to bring you down to the nook. And it adds more interest. So hopefully that's going to look really, really nice over time. So remember tunnels and pathways, etc. They have a way of attracting you down the garden. And in this case, this is exactly what it's going to do. It's going to bring me down here. Uh, will I change the path? I hear you shouting at me. Yes, I will. This will not be the same path. By this time next year, that path will have changed. I don't know what I'm going to change it to yet. Could be a hard path or it could be a simple gravel path. One thing I have to be mindful of is I want to keep this section open. So as we walk up this part of the garden, we'll come up to the walkway. And I need to make sure that I keep this section, which is effectively a crossroads. As you can see, that's effectively a crossroads. And I need to keep that because I want to be able to walk up and down different parts of the garden. And I want people to come down this way as well. So as you walk down, you'll be you'll be seeing it. You'll be seeing the pergola walkway in front of you. That one there. So imagine that. Four more, five more, four more times, sorry. Four more times running across there. And it's going to add quite a bit of interest, actually. I'm going to stick with telegraph poles. I had considered using just the big thick pine poles but to be quite honest I'm already on with telegraph poles so let's stick with the theme. Now this is a good example of the other post I could use and it, it wouldn't really hurt me if I struggle to get the post and this is the type of post I'm going to have to use. This type of post here which is just your standard pine post that you can buy. 
from most builders merchants or wood suppliers I'd rather not I'd rather stick with what I've got already which is the telegraph poles so they're a lot more interesting a lot more age and a lot more history to talk about so hopefully touch wood we will be able to find those so I've also been playing about with the the nook today and I've been just fiddling around really not not with anything structural I've just been moving a few things around now this little section here again I've got to get hold of another one of these or I've got to use something completely different I'm not sure I can get hold of this anymore it may mean me actually taking a pallet apart myself and creating this because I bought this at a, a local place here who was selling them and we did uh, I'm able to buy them as a finished structure but I've not, I've not been able to get hold of any at all just lately because I think they've run out. I think I've bought most of them. Uh, and, and that's what I've put on the side of the pillbox, as you can see there. That's the pillbox, as you know. And then I created that almost picket fence looking thing. And I need it all to tie in. So I'm desperate that I must get the same type of thing. And I'm sure I will be able to over time, but we'll see. So... This is the pillbox and the entrance to the nook. And if you remember, we've got this door, we reclaimed this door. And it was thrown away in a skip, or was about to be thrown away in a skip. And as you know, I couldn't let that happen. And it was a full-size door at the time, but it was rotten at the bottom, so I couldn't really use it at its full size. It wouldn't have hurt, because it, it wouldn't have caused any problems for me. But I didn't like the look of it, so I decided I would take that off and we would use it as a garden gate and one to this section. So as we open up, as you can see, I've been busy cleaning all the weeds away today. It's in constant change, this section, because I'm just waiting for things to grow. So the idea of that pergola walk is to bring you down here to the knot where we can sit and we can remain undisturbed. So, when I'm sat here, this is what I get. I get the secrecy of this. I could sit here and people could maybe spot me up that section there, but I generally sit in the back corner here. So that if anybody comes, they just don't know I'm here. Well, they do now if they watch this video. <laughs> but anyway, so, so this is the nook, and I'm really, really happy with this at the moment. I've been through this several times, but we might as well go back through the planting that I've come up with. Firstly, I've got this Nandina Domestica that I rescued. I rescued that and another one from a garden where the uh, tenants had sadly died, and I thought, well, I might as well take those rather than leave them because it it'd become a wild, overgrown mess, and I spotted those in it. So I lifted them, but to be quite honest, both of them... I've not been doing too well. That one in particular is about the best of the two. The other one I've actually thrown away now, and I'm likely to get rid of that one. On the back of the trellis, as you know there, that I did this section, just to give me a little bit more secrecy, a bit quicker, rather than wait for everything to grow. Because don't forget, there's, there's other bits at the back of this. We'll go through those as well in a minute. So there's other bits at the back of that fence. And it's all to add... A secrecy to this place it, which is why it was called the secret garden in the first place so that ivy is going to cover all that that reinforcing mesh it'll just cover all of that over time and we'll have a green wall and it'll look pretty nice at that point so i've got this feature here that i've shown you before and this is uh, what they call a copper i'm um, sorry a kettle a copper sorry a cap a copper rewind a copper and they used to do the washing in that back in the day and it used to have its own little shed or it would, everyone would have their own little washing shed that would sit in there on a brick sort of uh, purpose-built section and then water would be poured in, a fire lit below it and they would heat up the water for the washing. Now, because these things are obviously no, not used anymore, I decided, well, let's make a bit of a feature of it and a, a bit of a interest for this area. Now, I toyed long and hard about whether I should just put water in it and have it as some sort of little water feature. But I've got quite a few of those in up at Grassy Bottom, so I decided I wanted to do this. So it's got three ferns in there that I bought on the internet. So I've got these on the internet, and they are they're quite thick, really, these. They don't bend. They're not cheap. They weren't cheap at the time. 
and I would say they're about five, between five and ten mil thick. And when I bought them, they were silver looking, but they were intended to go off to a rusty colour, and, and I love that. I think it's just absolutely wonderful. So I've had to move around with that today because it's at probably one and a half feet to the left of where it is now, but it's much better suited there. And I've arranged the fern stalks a bit better. And they're just simply drilled into the section there. Easy to do, just a drill, drill it in, and then they're just pushed in into the soil below. So I could adjust those as and when I wish to do that, but at the moment they're looking pretty good. So some of the planting I've got, right, viburnums, you know I like viburnums. So this one's viburnum cinnamomifolium. And I love this one. It's going to be, I've never had it before, and it's going to make at least nine foot. It's flowering at the moment. I'm not sure if it's got a scent. Not really. Not really, unless it's already gone over or unless the flowers aren't out enough yet. But there's a fair few out. No, there's not really a scent on it, so... Not bought it for that anyway, but you can see this massive, smaller flowers than you would get on something like Ritidifilum, um, Viburnum Ritidifilum, which is a huge Viburnum, which we'll show you in a minute. This is These are a lot smaller, star-like, but as I said, they'll get taller. It'll get taller till about, I'm expecting up to nine feet, to be honest with this. And I wanted to do that because I want it to cover this area here. Again... It, what it'll do is it'll give me some sort of seclusion, but more than that, it'll act as a, a sound barrier. Obviously, I'm next to a road, as you can hear, and I'm getting cars come past all the time, and, and the more plants you put in, the less and less that sound becomes apparent, and that's hopefully what will happen as they grow. Now, grasses, if you're struggling with grasses, this one's called Calamagrostis brachytrica, and it will take shade. This is actually, in all fairness, in semi-shade gets a lot bigger than that probably make two foot three foot and it has some lovely elongated egg-shaped seed heads later in the year probably more towards august no september october possibly and the kind of the typical purple flushed seed heads but they're really good they stand really well and apparently i can't say if this is true but apparently flower rangers love them because they stand well in a pot so i've got two of those in there now this is that euphorbia, if you remember, that I planted stupidly into the sheep bale ring feeder further down the garden and I thought I could control it because I'd be able to see it escaping out of the side. And instead of doing what I did with the Miscanthus lutaria riparis, which was to put a bamboo barrier in, I didn't put a barrier in. I just simply planted these in it. And very, very quickly, because I planted so many plants in there, I must have put 15 plants in and very quickly... It spread and decided it was gonna, it was gonna leave and, and carry on in the rest of the garden. So I quickly realised this and got rid of it. So what I've done is I put it. It's, it's Euphorbia whistleberry garnet, and it's a Robbie type. I assume, I assume it's one from Robbie Eye, although I've read lots of reports on it, and some of them say that it's a Wolfenii type. I don't know if that's true. I can't believe that's true. Not looking at it, but you don't know. So that's Euphorbia Whistleberry Garnet, and I'm going to allow that to do its thing. Now, we've got the usual Ellie Bores in here. There's a, I think that's Argutifolia, that particular one, all self-seeded. We've also got ferns in here, different types of ferns. I've just moved this one today. We've moved that in there. And then these ones were put in at the back end of last year, if you remember, for those that used to watch my videos last year. And they're doing really well now. Absolutely excellently. And they look really good. And ferns, I just love ferns. Anyways, we all know they give it that kind of Jurassic look. And none of us were alive in them days, so I don't know how we know that, but we do. And then there's a grass there on the left there. And what else we got? And that is a that will like shady conditions as well. That'll take it. And then we've got this Lanicera. And this is L Lanicera nitida, and likely to be Bagginson's gold, although it was already here, if you remember, when I came here, and it, it can't be no bigger than a foot. And as I've said many times before, this is a very fast-growing shrub if you treat it right. But you need to keep clipping it, and that's exactly what I've been doing, clipping it. So I shall clip that again. I shall leave it a bit at the moment, and then maybe later in the year, I think it hasn't flowered yet by the looks of it. 
it will flower little insignificant white flowers i believe not worth having i grow it for that look and it goes more yellow the more sun it gets in the summer the more yellow that will go and yellow sometimes hard to place in the garden but it's okay down here because we're in a bit of a shady area as you can imagine so we shall clip that back keep clipping it back allow it to get taller allow it to get wider and that's why you need to clip it because it's a very very as you can see it's a very wobbly shrub so the more you cut it the tighter it becomes and the better it becomes so that's looking really nice at the moment time weather to put a few more bits in geraniums put a little tiny geranium there and the only reason i put that in there is because i, I pulled it out the other one a part of the other garden sections because uh, i planted quite a few and split them and just threw them in and just bung them in i don't even know which geranium it is so it's looking really nice really like it so it's practically done all but maturing and all but maybe maybe putting one or two more plants in there i don't know now what i've done since the last video is these were already here these are just bits of york stone that came off the original slabs and they're just sat against that concrete section there for no other reason than they're there they exist so the other two shrubs that i've got in here we'll start with this one this is uh aralia elata and it's commonly called well some people call it the devil's walking stick but it's commonly called the angelica tree and when you look at that you can see why it looks like angel wings they could almost be the angel wings and that could almost be the head at the other side and that's pretty much how it grows now where it comes from and don't forget people we are i'm talking about the uk up on the lincolnshire wolds we live here we don't live in the place where this grows as a native because in its native place and i don't know where that is probably asia or somewhere like that it becomes a very big tree and it's a very invasive species for them not here i've had this one in a pot maybe for two years maybe three years and i put it in the garden about a year and a half ago different part of the garden i've now moved it here down to the nook and it'll do really well here it'll be absolutely fine so that's Aralia elata now it is safe to keep it in a pot so if you if you wanted to try because these these leaves become massive over time they'll go to about two or three foot each leaf and you don't get very many leaves they always grow from the top you don't get any growing from the side shoots not even on the little one as you can see they're growing from the top again so that's all you can expect from that one but it's sending up more and more from the top again. So the little one in there. Now this one's Erbotria japonica, the Laquat tree. And again, not really hardy in England, but apparently if you pick from the right region from where these things grow natively, then you can often get a hardier form. Now this one was grown by a friend of mine who owns a nursery and he was given the seed, just given it and he grew them from seed. So he thinks that the ones that he's got that, that actually survived are the ones that'll be hardier. So I should be okay with this. And he's doing well. He's doing really well. I did it in a pot for possibly five years. And a year and a half ago, I got brave and put it here because I thought if it was going to live anywhere, this is probably where it'll live. So that's Erbotria japonica. And it's lovely. Lovely. Designers like this one because they like to include them in show gardens because of this big leaf it has. It is really nice and all its new growth is coming now, as you can see. So I'm very, very hopeful with that one. That's going to do pretty good. That's the toadstool that I was bought as a birthday present. I can't remember which birthday. I bought it as a birthday present and it's lovely. It just suits this area. And then we've got the ordinary metal type that you can buy anywhere, pretty much. So let's show you on the other side the nook but don't forget so as we come through here remember where i'm headed with it we're going to do this pergola walk or telegraph pole pergola walk it's going to be up there and you're going to walk out of here and then walk yourself into it and i think it's going to be really nice so this is the entrance to it not doing too much like i say that right hand side's got to be addressed it's a little bit messy and a bit scrappy around here because i've not been too fussed because i've been throwing everything when i when i put it oh in fact look at that 
there's a euphorbia going through there and that was just a turf that i put down there so what i shall lift that and i should take that out of there because that doesn't belong in there although it will grow well in this section the slugs and snails have been hammering them so i've been moving them into pots but this is the out oops this is the outside that's what you get for leaving your tools do it all the time as you know always leaving them out on display so this is the side view of it and we're, ne we're stood next to the shack at the moment as you can see, stood there, and it's next to it. So it's all giving continuity. It's all creating a scene, and that's what I intend to do. And, I, and it's got a lovely feeling round here. And I, I enjoy coming down and working around this area. I've got another telegraph pole top there, as you can see, with just a simple blackbird on, as I said in the previous videos. The blackbirds are fooled by that. They do come down here. And sit with it from time to time. And then we've got this shrub here, and this is a bugger for reversion. I'm just having a look now, see if I can see any that's going to revert. Now, this does tend to revert back to green, so you really do have to keep your eye on it. And this is one of the Eliagnuses, and it's called Pungans maculata. And I just love it because it is so shiny, the yellow. And as I said earlier, yellow's hard to place. And we seem to have a lot of yellow in this area, including the holly, which has got a yellow margin. But it's okay. So we've just got things like foxglove growing in there, just to give it that wild feel. We've also got some Japanese anemones. Now, they were already in here. So I can't, I'm not going to worry too much because they keep coming back. They don't seem to go away. No matter how much I dig those out, they don't go. But they're quite nice ones, so I'll leave them. We've got Cocosmia as well. That was already here. And that one is Lucifer. It's Well, it's Lucifer seedlings. And they do come true, so they're good. And again, I've got Eliborus here. I actually thought this one had died away. And I found the label for it actually in the nook. And as you can see, it's called Winter Moonbeam, Elabor, Winter Moonbeam, Elaborus. And it's got a lovely, lovely leaf to it. And that's why I bought it, because I just like the look of it. And over time, that should do okay. Then we've got Anamanthiele, Lassoniana, the pheasant tail grass. That'll do well in shade for you. Do well in the dry area for you. Once it's established, it'll do really well. And this one is new in last year, and it's called Cecilaria autumnalis. I prefer Nitida, if I'm quite honest. Autumn now, as the name suggests, it seeds more in the autumn. And the more longer than knitted uh. Got Lunaria, um, yeah, Lunaria, Lunaria, Lunaria annua. And it's just, just the annual one. I can't remember its common name, but it has those paper-like discs once it goes into seed. But it's, it's lovely, and it's just a self-set. I've not bothered with it. I've left it alone. Now, this is Viburnum tinus, and it's called Eve Priced. And it is one of the best. And it'll only make about five foot, six foot. So it's absolutely ideally suited to go into this area. And it'll create a bit of that privacy I long for. So the path runs down here and it runs down the side of it, as you can see. And it runs to the back or to the side of the shack. Now we put little features like this in for interest. That's all it's for really. And to water the birds, the birds can have a bath in there. And that's the other side of that fence that I'd created to give me more, more privacy quicker. And I decided that I would do that feature and not cover it both sides. I could easily hide this side with more tin, but I've decided, no, I like that as a feature. It looks good. We've treated it with some wood stain. And it look, to me, it just looks brilliant. I don't see why I should be changing that. No point at all. Now, the blackbird you can hear in the background is up there in the tree. And the reason it's making all that noise is because of Hamish. He's a little bugger. Hamish! <laughs> and he's looking at me. He never, he never catches them. Now, this is another Viburnum. Viburnum ritidifilum. And this is the flower. And you remember I, I showed you Cinnamomophilium with the small flowers. And this is it on steroids. And it's wonderful, this shrub. It makes about 12 foot, probably up to 15, depends where you get it. Hoping to get it up to about 9, 10 foot here in this section. Don't forget, it's fighting against this this tree here, so it'll be a little bit drier than it wants at the root, but it should cope with that. 
all the yellowing you see is quite normal it's coming in with its new leaves as soon as new leaves start coming in it starts letting go of some of the older ones and they will eventually just fall away and I, I tend to while it's small like this i tend to come in and i tend to remove them i don't like to leave them there for too long and they're dead easy to come off in fact in a good wind when they get to this point they will simply blow off the tree so hopefully over time that will grow pretty pretty big as i said hoping to get up to maybe eight nine ten ten foot would be nice and it will form this big shrub so i'm hoping to be able to train it to come over this pathway as an archway so again you'll walk through some type of tunnel which again will add interest there's a bamboo there that's another fire gc fire gc and knitted at winter black and again don't fear bamboos i keep telling you don't fear bamboos this is a, a strictly clump forming one now this year i'm hoping that all these that i put in all the fire gc's i put in three years ago will start growing taller this is the third year so they should do that so remember the first year the sleep second year the creep and third year the leap any plant that's general rule for them all and it usually is the case so that's doing well and the idea of that is to hide that feature there really over time because to be honest i couldn't be bothered to buy either more of this tin here because out for a start i wanted to be able to see the side of it see the side of that that's the anderson shelter arbor seat that we've just been saying and that will eventually grow taller and it'll obviously come to the right it'll go up and it should get easily as high as that fence and then that will add more interest now at the moment there's not really any pebbles down on here i had intended to put gravel down i haven't yet this is just an hardcore really that's all it is that's all that is and it's quite nice looking so there you go that is the new idea that i've got at the moment i say new idea i had that idea a long time ago but i've decided now that i'm going to execute it I'm, I'm i'm searching in vain to see if i can find some more telegraph poles and i will find them um just before i end this video i'm going to take you down to the wildlife area that we've been showing you because we've been watching the growth on this and hopefully at some point before this goes over i'll be able to show you more more on it but at the moment I wanted to show you that this rean palmatum, which Hamish has decided makes a good rain cover, is under there at the moment. Because these leaves are huge. They're about two foot each, these leaves. They're brilliant. And they're still keeping that look behind them. But what it's done, as you probably saw, is it's flowered, finally flowered. Now, I've done lots and lots of research on this, as I said. I was hoping this was going to come out red or pink, and it isn't doing either, so... That tells me that it is a, just an ordinary rheum palmatum. Nevertheless, it's a beauty. It could still be atrosanguineum. They still say it, it produces this red at the top, but the ones that I've seen have red flowers rather than this creamy white. So, yeah, so that's at that point at the moment, and it looks really, really nice, and I'm ever so pleased with it. And what I shall do with it is I shall take off those two flower stalks in the next probably three weeks, in, in a hope that I can save all the leaves because the leaves, it does have some sacrificial leaves. It will lose some of the leaves as summer comes in unless it gets enough water. But we shall see what happens. Now, you won't be able to see it, but in that bird box on the top there, there's a blue tit just flown out of it. I've got bird boxes all over this garden, so it's really nice. That's the first time I've actually seen something in that actually nesting. So hopefully... We shall see some baby blue tits at some point. I shall redo another close look at some of my borders, particularly this one, because recently I've been and bought loads and loads of plants, some good ones, all with my theme in mind. So I'm a bit of a grass collector, as you know, and I like, I like perennials that are going to suit that. So we shall show you more of that on another video, and we'll explain a little bit more about that. So I'll talk to you on the next one. Don't know.